grab their Bibles, go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Should have been some quick amens. It's the same one we read last week. Amens when you get there. All right, I gave you long enough. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you so much again, Father, for just all the victories of this church, the confirmation you continue to pour out, the joy that you continue to pour out. Uh, Father, families that are growing. Uh, Father, that's what's so cool is to watch Watch families, watch families grow and, and be a vessel for you in this community. Uh, Father, and abroad, uh, just continued people watching online from all over the country, all over the world. It, it's amazing to watch. And uh, Father, again, we praise you, and we want to make sure you get all the glory for that. Without you, none of that happens. And uh, Father, thank you for the vision that you gave us of this happening. And uh, again, the confirmation that you continue to pour out. Father, I pray... Today, the message that you've given me, uh, Father, has been one that I've, I've struggled with a little, uh, but Father, I, I have no doubt right now, uh, you have uh, lifted a heaviness that's been on me. Um, Father, I praise you for our leadership, um, the elders and the pastors. Uh, this morning, you had them pray over me today. It's a very humbling feeling. Father, I praise you for those men. I thank you for their continued support. And their love that they continue to pour out on me. Father, today this message you've given me, I need your boldness. So Father, in this moment, I'm asking that you anoint me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. That you take all of my fear, anxiety, selfishness, doubt. You strip that from me, Father. You replace it with your boldness today. Your wisdom and Father, again, most importantly, your love to pour out onto your people. Ask these things in your name. Help us to love, laugh, and forgive. Amen. If you got your Bibles out, and I hope you do, after I preached about it last week, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians a lot today. We're going to be in Romans for just a minute. We're going to be in Proverbs for just a minute. But mostly 1 Corinthians. So if you've got your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there. In the Bible, there is a very popular Bible verse that promises us, as Christians, a prosperous life. Most of you know this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, uh, where God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you. But for some reason, again, we continue to see Christians living a life full of harm and very little prosperity. And seeing this, I went to God and asked him what was happening to his people. And he told me that his church is missing a very important ingredient. God's given us all the ingredients we need to live a prosperous life, but a lot of us lack this key ingredient, and that ingredient is discipline. Today we're going to continue our series entitled Warrior Discipline. There were three ladies that passed away at the same time. One was a brunette, one was a redhead, <laughs> and one was a blonde. They got to heaven, and there's St. Peter standing at the gate, and he looks at all three of them and he said, I have a test for y'all and it's a test of discipline. And with this test, if you pass the test, I'll let you go through the pearly gates. If not, you go into the other place. He was questioning these three ladies, right? So he starts to tell jokes. He said, I've got a hundred jokes I'm going to tell y'all. And if you're disciplined enough not to laugh, because this is a serious place now. If you're, if, you're, if you're disciplined enough not to laugh, I'll let you through the gates. So he tells the jokes, and after the tenth one, the brunette cracks a smile and starts laughing. Poof, she gone. He gets to the 25th joke. The redhead starts to laugh. Poof, she gone. He gets all the way down to the hundredth joke. 
and the blonde sitting there tried everything she could. She was trying to fight it. She didn't want to laugh, and she just couldn't help it. She just busted out laughing. St. Peter looked at her, and he said, that was not even the best joke out of all 100. That was the worst one. How in the world did you laugh at that one? She said, heck, the last one. I just now got the first one. <laughs> Guys, we've got to be disciplined. Got to be disciplined. In this series, we're going to learn biblical ways we can implant discipline into our Christian walk that will not only make our lives better, but to the ones also that live around us, right? Last week in part one of this series, we discussed how we can improve our spiritual discipline. If you missed it, you can go to YouTube. You can watch it there. Today in part two of this series, we're going to discuss how we can improve in the discipline of our bodies. Discipline of our bodies. Before I continue, I want to remind everyone of something that we did discuss last week, and that is... Discipline is not a trait or characteristic you are born with, guys. It's a lifestyle that you choose. Every Christian can be disciplined. We're going to go look at the Bible verse that we looked at last week, Galatians 5, and 23. This is the fruits of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, which is discipline. So if you are a child of God, you do have access to discipline. Again, it's your choice whether or not you decide to do that. God has shown me three reasons of why we should discipline our bodies. The first reason why we should discipline our bodies is because our body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Don't you realize that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. You must, you must honor God with your body. In 1 Kings, God told Solomon to build a temple. This temple was to be the holy place that God's children could come and worship him. Guys, this temple was constructed out of stone, the finest of woods, and pure gold. The stones that Solomon used were 20 feet long, 13 feet high, and 3 feet thick. They weighed 13 tons each. That's 26,000 pounds. I want to show you guys a visual to give you an idea of how big and how heavy these stones were. You pull that up for me, Nick. Thank you, sir. So the stones were about the size of a two-car garage door, height, width, and then the thickness of three feet. And they weighed the same weight. One stone weighed the same weight as 28 grand pianos. Now, I don't know about y'all, but we had a grand piano. You sit up here. Y'all remember that? That thing was heavy. I couldn't budge it. Okay, 28 of those is what one stone, one stone that went with the temple weighed. The total amount of gold used to build the temple weighed 3,000 tons. In today's market, that much gold values for $156 billion. Solomon spared no expense to building God's temple. He made sure only the finest materials were used, and it was the strongest structure built at that time. Guys, he took building God's temple serious. Can we agree with that? My question to you today is how serious are you taking the temple that God's given you? How serious are you taking building your own temple that God's given you? Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and it is time that we take that very serious, guys. I need you to understand, this doesn't mean you have to go work out and eat perfect seven days a week, okay? This doesn't mean you have to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it does mean that we need to be serious about getting and keeping our bodies healthy. Keep in mind, we should not exercise and eat right. For selfish reasons, we shouldn't work out just so we can look good in a Speedo. 
we should take care of ourselves to honor God and the temple that he has asked us to build, right? Truth is, guys, all Christians, all of God's children come in all shapes and sizes. The cool part is, if you do this, if you do take care of yourself, you will feel good. And, and it's okay, and, and, and you'll look better, and that's okay, as long as you're doing it for God and not for yourself. Disciplining your body to where you look and feel better gives you confidence, guys. Am I wrong? Am, <laughs> am I wrong? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I didn't even, this is off script, okay? How many times, you ladies, y'all going to go out to eat with your friend? You know, and I'm saying that because I got a wife. But, but let's say even some of you ladies maybe going on a date, you know, and, and, and you try on eight outfits. You're going to wear the one that gives you most confidence, right? Amen. <laughs> you know how many outfits us men put on? I mean, I might, I might put on two. <laughs> I might. I might, you know. But not if I'm going out to eat with my buddies. I don't give a darn what they think, you know. Gives you confidence. We as Christians, guys, we need all the confidence we get in the world we live in today. We need that. Think about it, Christian warriors. Our job is to minister to others, to go and make disciples. In order to do this, again, we need all the confidence we can get. And I assure you, having a healthy appearance will always help in this area. I know this from personal experience. Some of you are like, Mike, I don't understand, you know, whatever you know Mike it's, it's hard to exercise and eat right guys I'm telling you I do I understand Nick if you could pull that picture up yeah I couldn't even open my eyes all the way guys that's 12 years ago look at them kiddos though good gosh fathers fathers it, it goes by really quick okay if you got young ones like I had right here goodness gracious that's oh Okay, I got to get off that. It's going to make me sick and cry and everything else. <laughs> Guys, 12 years ago, God, quit laughing. <laughs> Just, uh, take the picture down. Just take it down. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. So, <laughs> all right, serious time. All right, so 12 years ago, um, God put it on my heart to take care of myself and to start exercising and eating better. <clears throat> I had applied for a life insurance policy and I got a letter back saying that I was extremely obese. Well, I need you to understand I weighed 250 pounds and that may not be that much but when you're 5'9", that's a lot of weight. Okay? I was as big, I was as tall as I was wide. You know what I'm saying? Here's the main thing, guys. I was not healthy at all. I, I remember getting that letter back from the insurance company and it, and it made me mad. I just ripped up through the trash like whatever. I'm not in that bad of shape. That day, I remember it was in April, and that day I went home. It was a, a day kind of like it was yesterday, you know, 65 degrees. It was perfect weather outside, and the kids wanted to go outside and play. So I went with the girls, and we went outside to play. And being out there maybe three minutes, I got winded. And God slapped me in the face. He said, son, I have a plan and a purpose for you. You ain't going to make it there if you don't start taking care, better care of yourself. So I, I, made a, I made a lifestyle change, I mean, immediately, literally the next day, started exercising, started eating better. I didn't realize that the reason that he wanted me to do that was because he wanted me to pastor a church. And I'll be honest with you, this is the honest truth, guys. If I wouldn't have quit, I'd be plus 300 pounds right now, and after all the stress and pressure and the headaches that may come with a church and planting a church, I think I'd have had a heart attack in the last three years. I'm just being honest. God knew what he was doing. I just thank God every day that I actually listened to him. Where'd my pen go? Dead gum it. There it is. <laughs> Guys, I, I do want you to don't, <laughs> don't answer this question. I'm going to ask it. Don't answer it. Would y'all respect me if, uh, as a pastor if I didn't take care of myself? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I don't know that I could sit under someone that didn't take being healthy serious. If they're not honoring their body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, 
What else are they not honoring? It's no different with you guys. We're all ministers. We are all in the ministry business. We all need to have a healthy temple. And I want you all to see what Paul says about this in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, and 27. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. Shadow boxing, by the way, for some of y'all. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. What Paul is saying here, guys, how am I supposed to be a good witness to others if I'm not taking care of my body like God tells me to? Christian warriors, in order to be a great witness and set an example, you need to start by taking care of your body. If you don't discipline, excuse me, if you're not if you're not disciplined in your physical life, why do people think you're disciplined in your spiritual life? The second reason we need to discipline our bodies is because gluttony is a sin. Gluttony is having too much of something that is not good for you and and too much food or overeating or too much alcohol, too much Uh, tobacco it's a real problem but here's the thing guys too much food and overeating is a major problem in our country national polls show that 42 percent of all americans overeat and i think a big reason why this is is because the church is not talking about it i'm just gonna be honest i always go back to the church when i see a problem in our country okay abortion Transgender, overeating, lust. You, you, you go on YouTube, you don't see a lot of sermons about that. Because the church ain't talking about it. That's a problem. Most churches focus on the spiritual health of their congregation, but not the physical health of their congregation. The problem is, we as a church are supposed to teach the whole Bible. Not just some of it. The Bible stresses we are supposed to take care of our body physically as well as spiritually. We're not going to ignore these things at this church, guys. I realize I realize that some churches don't want to preach on this, and, and, and I get it. It's, it's a tough topic. It is, but I think y'all, especially y'all been here for the last three and a half years, we don't run from the tough topics. I'd much rather talk about them in here than you get outside and talk about them. In here, we can talk about it the right way. We have scripture to back it up. As your pastor, I took an oath. It was to teach everything written in God's word. And that means even talking about something like this today. I need you to understand I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm trying to better your life. I'm trying to get you to see that God has a purpose for you. He's got a plan for you. And if you're not taking care of your body and you leave this earth prematurely, you're not going to fulfill it. I love you guys. And just like your spiritual I worry about you spiritually. I worry about you physically. And the last thing that I need is that on my heart that I didn't preach about this today. I need you to understand gluttony is not a weight issue. When I talk about gluttony, I'm not talking about your weight God doesn't care how much you weigh, guys. He cares if you're taking care of your body. Some of us were not meant to look like bodybuilders or swimsuit models. Some of us don't. (laughs) Good Lord. Uh. (laughs) I lost.
lost my spot. <laughs> Where was I? Bodybuilders and swimsuit models. Okay. Some of us don't have that in our genetics. Okay. Some of us cannot exercise because of a physical condition that limits us. Some of us cannot eat certain foods because of a digestive condition. But I need you to understand, guys, all of us can have discipline to take care of our bodies to the best of our ability. I'm not saying you got to eat perfect 24-7, guys. I'm not saying you can't have a steak from Ironwood Grill occasionally. I'm not saying you can't eat ice cream once in a while. I'm not saying you can't even enjoy an adult beverage from time to time. It says not too much wine. I said not too much wine. <laughs> I said from time to time. But not every day, guys. When it comes to food, we all have weaknesses that we need to monitor. Do you all have weaknesses in your food? Guys, man, mine's jelly beans. <laughs> you give me a bag of jelly beans. Now, now, not the kind that's got like earwax taste and all that kind of mess in it. You know what I'm talking about? Like that ain't no, but you give me the fruity kind, I will eat a whole bag of jelly beans. <laughs> jelly beans, I love them. <laughs> Strawberry cake. I love I, ice cream. Man, it's funny you say that. So, so back in, in, in my bigger days. My wife said I was fluffy. <laughs> yeah, I know. So back when I was fluffy, guys, I ain't lying to y'all. This is how undisciplined I was. I never exercised, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Every day, I would eat a family size of Doritos, And a big thing of Blue Bell homemade cookies and cream ice cream. At the same time. <laughs> well, not at the same time. It's not like I was dipping the chip in the ice cream. That's weird. <laughs> I'd eat the chips, and then I'd eat the ice cream, right? But literally, I'm not exaggerating. Sometimes that would be my supper. Like, that's what I'd eat for supper. No wonder I got so overweight and so unhealthy. So fluffy. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Guys, I got a lot of respect for people that can discipline their diet. You know, don't you? I, I, actually, I don't, I don't like them people. You know, them people that, you know, is like chicken and broccoli. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Enjoy life a little bit. But do you know how you can tell if somebody is extremely disciplined with their diet? The ones that you can look at and be like, man, that dude is stout. You know what I'm saying? The ones that can eat the movie popcorn when the movie actually starts. Okay. <laughs> that, that's, it's hard to do. You, you get it, you prepare it, you get all that butter on it and so forth, and, and then it's sitting there, and you got to watch 20 minutes of, 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 you know, before stuff. Like, come on, man. You know, it, that's hard to do. But that's a strong, disciplined individual. All right, let's get off it. But all kidding aside, guys, the Bible takes gluttony very serious. I want to show you guys the stoutest verse in the Bible that I have found when it comes to gluttony. I want to go look at Proverbs 23, 2. You put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. Yeah, right? Ugh, that's a tough verse, man. The truth hurts sometimes, guys. Gluttony is the same as putting a knife to your throat what it is guys if, if you're overeating if you're eating unhealthy if you're not taking care of yourself I need you to understand this you're killing yourself that's how serious God takes it God commands us to stay clear of gluttony I'm going to move on to the third thing, but before I do, I need y'all to understand something. Gluttony is not a salvation issue. Y'all hear me? It's not a salvation issue. You're saved by the blood of Christ. You're saved by faith. But it is an issue. And it's something that we need to get a hold of as a church. 
The third and final reason we need to discipline our bodies is because our bodies belong to God, not us, God. Let's go to Romans 12, 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Do I even need to read any further? It's a man that died on the cross. You, you, you should give your bodies to God because of what he's done for you. Like, that's really all we should need. But he continues. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Living in holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. He didn't find myself acceptable 12 years ago. This is truly the way to worship him. Taking care of yourself, taking care of your body, you're worshiping him. It might be the hardest way to worship, by the way. But it's worshiping him. You need to understand, guys, the body you have was given to you for a purpose. And again, that purpose is to serve God with it. It's to serve it with the best of your ability. I have people that will ask me, Michael, why in the last 12 years, what changed? I'll be honest with you, when he first told me to start eating better and exercise, I just thought it was because I was going to die. I didn't know I was going to be even, I mean, that was before Christian was in ministry. I had no clue what he had planned for me. But I will say this, once I figured it out, once he showed me the plan, that's why I do exercise. That's why I do try to take care of myself the best that I can. And listen, there's days that I don't. But I do try. And the reason why is because I want to be here as long as possible to fulfill his plan. I want to be here. As long as he wants me on this earth, I don't want to die prematurely. I want to make sure that I give every effort I can to be here to fulfill that plan that he has for me. It should be no different with every Christian. And don't get me wrong, I slip. I ate a bag of jelly beans every once in a while. It happens. But if you just continue to take care of yourself, you, your body will recoup. It's when you're not. It's when you're not exercising, you're not eating right, and, and, and when you're not doing both of those, you're damaging your body, which in the long term could damage his kingdom. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 7, 4. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband, and the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. This verse tells me that our bodies also belong to our family. We need to take care of our bodies and stay healthy so we can support our family. You need to understand that the way that you treat your body, parents, it's being watched. Your children are watching. I promise. You as parents set the tone of how healthy your household is. We need to set the example of a lifestyle your children should live for the rest of their life. An unhealthy lifestyle, guys, that's a curse, and it's a hard one to break. If you don't believe me, go watch that show, My 500-Pound Life. Because I promise you, the one that's 500 pounds, if they show their parents, they're 480 pounds. I'm serious. It's a lifestyle, and it's a curse, and it's hard to break. We do not need to pass this lifestyle down to our children, guys. That alone should be enough to motivate us to try and stay healthy.
there's enough struggles in this world that our children are going to be walking into already. Guys, we got them 18 years. Well, some of you are like, no, man, my kids can live to age 30. <laughs> You're supposed to only have them 18 years. <laughs> Kick them out. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. You got 18 years to teach and mold and mentor and set an example for your kids in that first 18 years for the rest of their life. And I promise you, they'll follow it. They may not like it. My kids, man, let me tell you, my kids, they'll go over to Dee Dee and Papa, that's Mark and Debbie. And uh, at our house, me and Amanda, we, we try to have healthy food, healthy snacks, healthy chips, healthy ice cream. <laughs> so we try to do all this healthy stuff, right? They go to Dee Dee and Papa's, and they come home with a bag of junk. They'll get into their, you know, in, into, their, into their food pantry, and, and they come home with a bag of junk. It's like a buffet. <laughs> they just go in there and start picking things out. Funny story, Annabelle went over there one time, and she came home, and we looked in her bag, and she had potatoes in there. <laughs> All we had was sweet potatoes at the house. I want to close with a challenge I have for all of us today, guys. I want to challenge all of us to have a lifestyle change today. Today. I want to challenge each of us to eat right and exercise, no matter how that looks. Just better than what you're doing now for 40 days. That's not a long time. Somebody went, oh, 40 days. And I'm going to tell y'all why the number 40. In the Bible, it symbolizes a period of testing. Because that's what that number represents, I truly believe that it takes 40 days of doing something consecutively, and it will become a lifestyle change. Because I believe everything in that word. A period of testing. Now, you may be looking at me, and, you know, you may have a six-pack and can run eight miles, and you're like, Micah, wait a minute, you know, I'm doing all this. I'm healthy. I'm doing all this. Do better. <laughs> I guarantee you, you can do better. We can always do better. I don't want to hear that. Guys, this challenge is for all of us for 40 days. Some of you are looking at me like, but, Micah, I just started one 40 days ago. Do it with the church. Let's do it as a team. I promise y'all. Do you have the discipline to do it for 40 days? I need y'all to think about 40 days from now, we're getting close to Thanksgiving. <laughs> Be glad I didn't do it in Thanksgiving and Christmas time. This is before Thanksgiving. Start <laughs> that's too easy. See, that's too easy. See, I'm trying to get y'all healthy and lose a little weight before Thanksgiving gets here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I wear my stretchy pants at Thanksgiving. Like, seriously. <laughs> that, that discipline goes out the window at Thanksgiving. Guys, all kidding aside, as a team, as a church, the reason why I'm asking us to do this as a church is we can encourage and lift each other up together. We can work together and make this happen. We can. 40 days from now, y'all going to walk in here, everybody going to have on new clothes because you can't fit in the ones you got now. You're gonna, but, but here's the best thing. You're going to feel better. You're going to have more confidence in yourself to set an example and to witness for God's kingdom. That's the most important thing. It's not about how we look. It's about how we feel. It's the most important thing. 